Okay, searching large text repositories, Google in a box with LAMP technology. It's a couple of nice words there. Um, let's start out with a uh, quick introduction to me. Um, I'm a senior scientist that works at uh, Distal Interactive. You might have heard of Distal Interactive. We make games for training purposes. Um, the, I work over there in um, the AI aspects. I'm half of the research team over there and um, we're working on ways to generate the content for the game automatically using NLG um, on uh, analytics to track what the players are doing inside the games and on building automatic assessment. Um, I have a couple of articles that I put on my blog and that's my uh, email. If anyone wants to contact me to ask about anything about this presentation, very accessible. I also have a secret identity which is a uh, um, consultancy that I run on the site where I focus on the stuff that's really interesting to me. Things like search, machine translation, automatic summarization and so on. So the technologies I'll be talking about in this presentation are uh, part of what I do over there. I have a Twitter account and LinkedIn. Again, if you want to contact me, uh, you're most welcome. Um, if you go on to the next slide. Uh, my PhD is from Cambridge University in UK. This is a uh, and uh, the lady who actually invented search technologies used to sit two um, doors away from me, Dr. Karen Spark-Jones. Um, she passed away a few years ago, but uh, we, we were still in awe of her. I still couldn't find myself like, very hesitant when I'd go and talk to her because there was like the mother of everything that you know, we look at in terms of Google and Yahoo and all that. Um, I have about 15 publications in information retrieval, machine translation. This is from the time when I was actively in, 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 in academia. I have a refugee from academia to industry, so um, not that many publications recently, but I still try and get about one a year. Okay, so let's start out with uh, um, the stuff I'll be talking about today. First, I'll introduce uh, web search. Not in the sense that there's a box and you type in st things over there, but I'll talk a bit about the economic model behind it, um, how it actually works. We can discuss some of the stuff over there. Then I'll talk about enterprise search. That's what this talk is mostly about. Web search is different from enterprise search for a number of uh, very interesting reasons. So I'll be touching upon that in the second uh, part of this presentation. Then I'll talk about some of the techniques for free text search. Um, and then I'll uh, introduce some open source free text search tools that are as good as a lot of the commercial uh, offerings that you can find nowadays. Please. Okay, let's start out with a question. What's your favorite search engine? Let's just go through the list, have a quick vote. Who likes Google? Google is too popular. Uh, Yahoo? Okay. Ask? Ah, there's one guy. Cool? Oh, I don't like them either. Microsoft Live Search? Okay. No Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> and uh, any others? Anyone's got an interesting search engine that we have not heard about? Yeah, it seems like um, N minus one people here like Google and one person likes Yahoo. Um, Google has one of the best performances out there, but uh, recent re re studies have shown that Yahoo's performance is as good as Google's. But because of the brand name that Google has, you know, people are, don't even consider the other alternatives anymore. Okay. There's a interesting a bit of economics behind why uh, Google is so successful. Um, the people who study information economics, uh, they talk about this thing called a network effect, which basically states that when you're part of a network, every person that gets added to the network makes it more valuable to you. So for example, we take a world where there was no cell phones, and uh, you have a cell phone, and you can't call anyone. How valuable would that cell phone be to you? not very valuable. Then suddenly your, your friends start popping up, your family, your significant other, your colleagues. It's a lot like uh, Twitter that's taking off nowadays. It suddenly becomes more and more valuable. And that's something which the cell phone company has not done anything about. It's just that every time someone gets added, the network becomes bigger because the resource and the people you can access grows. Search engines benefit from a variant of this which is known as the two-sided market. In the the classic markets where there was positive feedback and a network effect, most of the participants in the market were homogeneous. Someone who has a cell phone is about the same as someone else who has a cell phone. With search engines, you actually have a two-sided market where you have the audience, 
That's the people who go in front of the Google uh, page and they type in their uh, queries. And then you have Google who provide the media and then you have an ad advertisers. The currency in this particular market is your attention. So you might think that you know, these people at Google are really, really nice. They're giving me this amazing search engine for free, which saves me a lot of time, and it does save you a lot of time. But when you go there, you're exposed to advertisements, which companies who want to sell you stuff and who want to target ads towards people who would be interested in those ads, they take their attention and then they give money, which goes to uh, Google. Google has made a couple of billion dollars recently because of that. I mean, in terms of the raising money in the stock market and so on. Here we go. Please. Thank you. The technology behind search engines is actually not that complicated. This is web search engines, and I'm specifically talking about PageRank. It's essentially a popularity contest. And I say popularity contest because your page and its page rank is determined by how many links point into it. So if you got tens of thousands of people saying that, yeah, this is an interesting web page and they hyperlink a connection to you, they voted for you. What's interesting though about this uh, contest is that it's not a uh, democratic uh, voting scheme. If you have a lot of, uh, a very high page rank and you point a link out towards another page, your page rank will flow out. So if you have a page rank of eight, which is like one of the highest page ranks you can have. I think it goes up to nine or 10. Um, and you only have two links going out of your site, automatically those other two sites are going to have like page ranks of like half of yours. And it follows a probabilistic uh, system. Um, it's called page rank, not because of web pages, but because one of the two people who worked on it was Sergey Brin and Larry Page. So he, it was a bit of a vanity naming. He called it page rank because Larry Page invented it. But it, it stuck. Um, it, it's, uh, technically, it just uh, appears as a big matrix, and uh, it converges very quickly. Because you have to worry about the fact that when the links uh, go from one page to the other, you know, the next time round, it is going to flow onward. So you have to iteratively run it to a point where it converges, and there's not much of an appreciable change. OK, can we go on? Page rank thought doesn't work for everything. I'm sure Yoda doesn't have a web page that will give him a very high uh, page rank, but he is someone in an alternative universe who is very highly regarded. So, I feel uh, now it's not only Yoda that uh, has to suffer a low page rank and uh, gets judged badly. In terms of enterprises, there's also a uh, issue. Remember, page rank is based ultimately on hyperlinks, which means that there has to be a link from many, many documents to that one document which you're trying to calculate the page rank of. How many links are there in uh, documents inside organizations? Any idea? Not that many. I mean, when you write a document, you don't actually say that, well, it's linked to these 15 documents. And once you've read to page 15, please uh, go and read the document on that a person that's three cubicles down because he continues it and then there's three other uh, persons over there who are also working on it. Um, you might find those type of linking in the um, uh, academic uh, publications because there are a lot of cross-referencing. You find them in the end of the documents and that's where they got the idea of uh, PageRank from originally. But you don't find that much in uh, enterprises. So PageRank actually fails if you try and apply it inside an organization. That's why Google is focusing most of their big guns on the web search. That's their bread and butter. They have some stuff in uh, terms of uh, creating and search applying.